we have a microcontroller doing a little PWM action on pin number six. And here we have a very cheap digital multimeter measuring around 10 milliamps of current going through that circuit at about four volts. And everything's fine. It's fine until I put this guy to sleep and then try and measure what could well be nanoamps, um, but certainly microamps. And this guy is going to struggle quite a bit to get that sort of um, resolution at those very low currents. So there's a few different options, but I thought uh, when I was cruising through techn the Technobology site, that's David Johnson Davies site, which we've seen on this channel before, uh, and he's got a project from 2019, I think, which is based around the ATiny84, and he's got a very clever circuit to measure very low current draw. So uh, I thought I'd give that a bit of a go uh, and make that and see how it goes measuring, for instance, a microcontroller when it's asleep. We've done plenty of time-lapse videos when I'm putting these things together. This is your ATiny84 in an SSOP version, and this is an adapter so that we can actually program it and work with it. Uh, so rather than solder it up on time-lapse, I thought I'd do the old YouTube trick where you just wave your hand. Just wave your hand and right just a sec right so after a bit of research i found that you need a green screen for this to happen so now when you wave your hand it solders up so yep that's worked fine so now what i need to do is to put this into david johnson davies circuit and uh, start measuring some nano current Okay, so here is the code from David Johnson Davies. There's only a couple of things I've changed really, uh, and that is because instead of 5 volts, I had 4.98, and instead of 1 microfarad, I had, uh, I think, 964 uh, nanofarads, etc. So that's hard-coded in there. But apart from that, everything is as uh, David has written. So here it is being programmed up into the ATiny84, ready for the circuit. Here's the ATiny85 doing its thing. We've got a nominal one microfarad capacity here, which will be what's discharging to the circuits to, um, to test what current they're drawing. And, uh, and here's our display and here's the reset button. So I've already tested it a couple, but just to show you that. So this is the 9.6 megahertz ATiny13, not sleeping, galloping along at 9.6 megahertz and registering high. And same with the 128, so I'll just shift that over to here. So that's the ground wire, and this is our test wire. And we'll reset, and also high. So that's those two readings here. At the moment, we're at 5 volts, but we'll switch across to 3.3 volts. And what I might also do is put a digital multimeter in this region here, because I don't think that this nano current meter is going to be able to measure these higher currents. All right, so let's now swap to the 128 kilohertz. This is the sleeping ATiny, but the brownout detector's on, the analog to digital converter is on, the analog comparator is on, and the watchdog timer is on. So let's see what that registers. So 15 microamps. Yep, and that seems to be pretty consistent, so that's Write that one down. Now this next one might take a little longer, so I may end up having to actually, yeah, like fast forward it for you. We'll just see how we go, because it can take up to a hundred seconds to measure as it goes into the uh, the discharge cycle. So in other words, the less current that that this microcontroller draws the longer it's going to take to discharge this little one microfarad capacitor. So, oh, and there it is at 104. Actually, I'll just check that for repeatability. Now, because there's no little U written after there in uh, the display, then it's 104 nano uh, amps.
So we'll just see how reproducible that is. Probably find that around at that level, well actually that's very reproducible, so it's 104 and that's nano amps. Okay, good. All right, let's swap out to the 3.3 and all of those should, um, should go down. So I've put a 3.3 volt regulator into the circuit now and this Atony 84A has been hard coded for that voltage and also of course for the actual capacitance as well. So you can check that out in the, uh, in the code on the blog. All right, so let's just do a 9.6 megahertz trial and that is also high. And then we'll swap over to the 128 kilohertz not sleeping. That is also high as expected. Just test that again. Yep, that's pretty reproducible. Now we'll go to the sleeping, but with the brownout detector on, with the watchdog timer on, etc., etc., etc. But it should be lower than the 15 microamps, I'm thinking. Not much, but we've got a 13. Is that reproducible? Yep. So there is a little bit of a drop there. And then finally we go to everything asleep and everything turned off while we're asleep. And this may take a few seconds to, uh, to actually draw down that current into the sleeping processor. 94. See if that's reproducible. Ninety-four once, ninety-four twice. Very good. So um, that's proof of concept. So now we can use this. I might actually put this on a PCB, and um, we might then be able to compare directly the A tiny thirteen A when it's asleep versus the um, the other one. Oh, I know what I've forgotten to do. I need to go and measure these ones. So I'll come back and we'll measure the actual current for those ones that aren't sleeping. Here we are, we're still at 3.3 volts, I haven't swapped this out yet. And um, this is me measuring high, if we just reset that, we get high again, but we're through our uh, pretty cheap digital multimeter, we're getting 1.6 and that is milliamps. So let's just write that one down, 1.6 milliamps. We'll swap across to the 128 kilohertz non-sleeping version by comparison. So again, high here, and not measuring on this one. Let's go down to, and we'll just press that again. And it's dropping down to 23, and that is microamps. All right, so now let's swap across it's weird that that's actually 23 that's not too much above this one here i'm just wondering well of course you, <laughs> you don't know with these meters in fact this has come up 63 isn't that interesting look at that 71 so before that wasn't measuring so there's something going on with how this is discharging with this extra meter in there but look it's just for uh, indication purposes and what i really want to see is how this varies with the one that's galloping along on five volt. So let's do that. So here we are at five volts and this is the 9.6 megahertz and we'll just press this again, definitely high on this meter and three, 3.2, 3.2 milliamps here. All right, let's swap in across to the 128 kilohertz version. And we'll just kick that one. Around 0.5. Try again. Dropping down. Yep. So that is 0 0.5 milliamps. Let's try swapping that. No, that's not in the micro range. Okay. So um, that's the circuit working for this week. And... Um, uh, one of the things which I really like to do is is change this capacitor for the sort of polyester film type capacitor that David uses on his version and uh, and get all this soldered up. 
Uh, these connections have been a bit wobbly uh, through this test process, which has been a little bit of a trial. I'll put these on the blog and uh, we'll come back probably in the next few weeks at some stage and do the comparison between these chips and the, uh, and the Baduk ones. See you then.